The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. Has science confirmed that humans evolved from apes? That's what we're talking about today. Welcome to the Creation Today Show from the CTN studio in Pensacola, Florida. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Coven, and I'm joined by the brilliantly British Paul Taylor. Well, welcome. And uh, on today's show, we are talking about uh, apes and humans and uh, whether they're related. And I've done a little bit of family research and I can't find an ape in my family. None. No. Not in the, they're in a lot of trees, but they're not in family trees, apparently. Hey, we are excited about today's show because uh, we really want to answer your questions. If you have questions for us to answer, this is a friendly place. Send them into questions at creationtoday.org. Enjoy the show. So a popular idea among evolutionists today is this idea that humans evolve from apes. We evolve, well, to get it technically correct, we need to use the word primate, don't we? Because that's the word they're using now is primate, right, Paul? Yes, uh, technically, I guess what the evolutionists want us to say is that uh, they believe that humans and apes share a common ancestor, that therefore apes have evolved too, and that humans have evolved and they've come from the same common ancestor. So when we say, well, hey, if humans are still, or if apes are still evolving, why do we have them around today, not humans? Not a good argument. They're just kind of taking it one step farther back and saying, no, apes and humans split back at the primate stage. It's not a good argument because it shows uh, a lack of understanding of what evolutionists say. However, it's also got to be said that uh, evolutionists really are um, playing with words, playing mm. with semantics, yeah. because what would this common ancestor be? It would be some sort of ape-like creature and would not be human. So you re they really are just playing with words when they use this argument. However, let's just uh, argue things on their lines because we can argue against that point just as easily as saying humans didn't evolve from apes. All right, we had a question come in. Paul. Yes, uh, it's not so much of a question really, more a statement from somebody who wanted to put me right on the whole issue of, uh, of uh, human evolution. And uh, in a sort of backwards and forwards uh, discussion on um, a Facebook page, uh, uh, a young man will call him Jay, uh, was saying that actually uh, science has proved that humans evolved from apes and it's all down to the chromosomes. When you look at chromosome number two on the humans, that proves evolution, he says. Uh, chromosome number two proves evolution. Now perhaps we really ought to explain what it is about chromosome number two that he's saying uh, proves evolution. Some people I have know one what of these things, about. right? I have a chromosome number two. You, you do You indeed. got one. Uh, yes. Does Jeff have one? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It okay. depends how far evolved he is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now, Explain it. Well, what it is is uh, that mm -hmm. uh, apes tend to have uh, 24 pairs of chromosomes, 48 chromosomes in all, but they're going to be in pairs, so they would have 24 pairs of chromosomes. Humans have just 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we're obviously not related mm. to them because we've only got 23, they got 24. But but what you will find is that there is this um, there's a strange phenomenon in uh, genomes, when you, you look at uh, genomes, you sometimes find that it appears as if um, two chromosomes have fused together and they tend to fuse together around a central core, so you get uh, what's called centric uh, fusion. And uh, that particular chromosome is chromosome number two in the human genome, which uh, looks like two uh, fused chromosomes. Interesting. The argument is that there's mm. a lot of common data between the um, the chimp chromosomes and the, the and the human chromosome uh, chromos chromosomes, so therefore they're saying, well, this fused one shows that we do actually uh, have evolved from uh, ape-like ancestors. It's just that two of the chromosomes on the ape are fused into one. Uh, one pair humans. giving us uh, just 23 pairs. So that's why we've only got 23 because of the fused ones. Yes. You know, Ken Miller has really been popularizing this idea for a number of years. I want you to take a look at a video that uh, they produced of Ken talking about this and showing how to him this is absolute proof of evolution. Check this out. If humans share a common ancestor with apes, you'd expect us to have the same number. But surprisingly, 
human cells contain only 23 pairs. Now if we share a common ancestor, what happened? Is it possible that in the line of evolution that led to us, a pair of chromosomes from a primate ancestor just got lost and just got discarded? Well, the answer to that is no, it's not possible. And the reason is because every primate chromosome has so many important genes on it that the loss of both members of a pair would be fatal. It wouldn't even get through embryonic development. So there's only one possible explanation. And that explanation is that in the line that led to us, two chromosomes that were separate in other primates became fused to form a single chromosome. Interesting. So is that what happened? Is that proof of evolution right there? Does that, does that guarantee that that's what happened? Well, no, it isn't proof of evolution. And there are a number of reasons why it's not proof of evolution. But be, before we sort of get into that, I think we ought to comment as well that actually uh, Ken Miller is someone who claims a Christian faith. And this is why he is, uh, uh, I believe his background is Roman Catholic, but this is right. why he is often being used on this because people will say, well, look, there's one of your own. There's a Christian who says uh, that this evolution has happened and without getting into debates about different sorts of Christians <laughs> uh, at this point the point is that uh, he's claiming a sort of theistic evolution here correct saying hey obviously God must have used this because uh, here it is we see it happening isn't he approaching this information the, the fact that human chromosome number two looks like it's been centrally fused together it's got telomeres on each end but it's got a, a unique middle part is he yep. using this but looking at it from evolution already well, taking place to come to this conclusion? Yeah, this is the point. It's uh, the only, uh. you know, you see that the humans have got 23 chromosomes. Uh, what you don't, uh, what you isn't saying is that when you look at many other animals, you see the same effects. But in those other animals, people are not assuming that there is a line of uh, uh, evolutionary descent. It's only uh, being talked about with humans because he starts with the belief the idea. That, uh, that humans have evolved from a common ancestor with apes. Now, there are a number of animals where this is seen, and uh, one example would be rats. You get a number of rats that have this effect in. Sheep and goats have this effect in. It's been seen in a lot of sheep. And uh, when, when you get sheep with, a, uh, with fused chromosomes, they actually, surprisingly, remain sheep. And it's perfectly possible <laughs> to find yeah, so it's possible to find some varieties of sheep that have up to three of these centric fused chromosomes. So it is, I suppose, possible that uh, the chromosomes that we're talking about in humans have fused and okay. that all the what, humans that don't have those fused chromosomes no longer exist, maybe because uh, they were humans that died out in the flood, maybe, I don't know, but it's possible, I'm not saying it is, it's possible that God made those uh, uh, particular chromosomes Already that fused. way, okay. but if they were fused, then it could only possibly be human chromosomes that are fused, and not ape chromosomes, because as we've seen from from rats and from sheep, um, when the chromosomes fuse, they remain within that type. It's not a brand new kind of animal all no. of a sudden just because they've fused together. Now, well, the other I, thing that perhaps quickly ought to okay. say, though, as well, it's a non-scientific point if you're technical on that, is that Ken Miller is claiming to be a Christian. And uh, when we're looking, therefore, at the supposed evolution, uh, it's very important to remember that the best evidence that you can always take in any of these examples is eyewitness evidence. <laughs> so we true. should talk about what the eyewitness says. And the only eyewitness to the events of where the animals came from is God himself. You know, that is a great point. And I love the fact that uh, we, we just got done with our Proof of God conference. Yes and it's now available on DVD. It was incredible. And it takes people back to this idea of, man, let's go, well, let's go with an eyewitness account of what happened. Let's take God and his revelation and take that truth. So little plug for the creation story. Am I allowed to do that? Oh, Is that yes. legal? Definitely. Legal department? We're good. Yeah. Uh, we just finished the Proof of God conference and it's available on DVD at thecreationstore.org. Yes, absolutely beautiful. You know, hey, Paul, I want to tell them I recently got a prestigious award. Can I tell them about that? Oh, yes. Tell them about that okay. after this. What sort of nation are we bringing our children up in? What sort of world are we bringing our grandchildren up in? What's going on? What's happening? We see the collapse of the Christian fabric, the collapse of the Christian worldview. Why is that? Because a foundation has been removed and the structure is collapsing. What foundation? The foundation of the authority of the Word of God.
all over the world, there are similar findings of ancient religions, cities and towers, advanced astronomy, and civilized government. Over the course of two years, a team of researchers from Jackson Hole Bible College have worked to bring together the different pieces of the convoluted mystery and history of ancient man. With an overwhelming amount of evidence for the intelligence of these early innovators. To order this book, The Genesis of Ancient Man, visit us at www.creationsdoor.org. Welcome back. You're watching the Creation Today show with me, Paul Taylor, and with Eric Hoven. And we were talking during the break about the Proof of God conference Man, that we had conference. some uh, weeks ago and uh, how exciting it was. We had a great time, didn't we? Did you enjoy yourself? Because I loved it. I had a, I had a ball. It was I wonderful. mean, when you're hanging out with Mark Spence and Kirk and uh, Ken Ham, Kirk Ham, uh, Ken Ham and Carl uh, Kirby and all the breakout speakers that we had, it really was a great time. The comments that we're getting from you guys that attended, by the way, thank you for coming out to the Proof of God conference and your comments and your testimonies have been a real encouragement to us, showing us that we accomplished what we went there to accomplish. And that was that was really fun. And of course, we've had a lot of questions about the conference. The main question that I've been asked frequently over and over again is, are we going to be able to watch the talks on DVD? Well, I'll answer that question with a great answer. The answer is, of course, yes, you may right here for just I don't know how much it is, but you go to thecreationstore.org and we've got all eight sessions, all eight of the main talks. Uh, Eric Coven, Ken Ham, Paul Taylor, Ken Ham, Carl Kirby, Mark Spence, Seitzenberg and Kate and Eric Coven, along with all of the breakout speakers, audio on MP4 available in this very nicely done package where you get all five discs for whatever the price is at uh, thecreationstore.org. Yeah. I should have looked that up. Yeah, so the price, mm. of course, is fill in price here. $89. Uh, that's, there that's, we that's, go. That's the and, price that it's and going that's to be. The price. So make sure that you get that. It will be well worth the $89 that you pay for it. <laughs> that's right. You know, I got to tell you, honestly, the testimonies that we're getting from people, uh, specifically, this is what I hear over and over. I thought I was going to go and learn a lot of information that I was going to have to memorize to try to argue for the proof of God. Really, what I found out is who God really was, and I don't need to defend him, but I need to defend my faith in Christianity and defend the truth of Christianity, and they loved how that was presented. Yes, and uh, of course, it, it's part of one of the many sets of DVDs that we have that you can buy at the Creation Store. Another one, of course, being your uh, famous beginning series, which is so famous that uh, part of uh, one aspect of that has won you a highly prestigious <sighs> award recently. I don't like to brag. I, I try to be humble. I got a award for humility, yeah, I, but then they took it away because I was showing it off. <laughs> I uh, I did win an award recently. Yeah, it must have been, obviously, for best looking creationist speaker of the year. No, no, it wasn't that one, Paul. Oh, right. I haven't even been nominated for that oh, one. All right, so I don't have to give that one up to you. No, yet. you don't. Right, not okay. yet. Not yet. Um, right, what? so in that case, what could it possibly have been? Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at not just a nominee, but the winner of da -da 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 -da. the Golden Crocoduck Award. The gold, not the Golden the, Crocoduck. The Golden Crocoduck Award. Uh, what's the Crocoduck Award? Oh, you're not, you're not familiar with that one? No, I haven't oh. come across that. Well, see, I minister to a couple different groups of people. We, on a regular basis, talk to people that are saved, and we help strengthen their faith in the Word of God, showing them how the Bible and science don't conflict. They go together. We also talk to a lot of people who we get the privilege of winning to Christ. That's the whole point. Yes. But by God's grace, He's allowed me to talk to a third group of people. Right. And that yeah. third group of key people is... The atheist, agnostic, antichrist, God-hating YouTubers. Sorry, what was that? The atheist, antichrist, the atheist, agnostic, antichrist, God-hating YouTubers. Well, that's easy for you to say. Yes, it is. What basis have they given you this award for? Oh, well, they said that I am in breach of the ninth commandment, that I have told a lie in an attempt to further the truth of creation. You've told a lie in an attempt to further the truth of creation. I don't know if they would mm. call it truth. Right, two that's things occurred to me. First, what was the nature of of that lie then. Okay, they took a section out of my beginning series on the age of the earth, because you know we yes. talk about how evolution is a religion, we go into the age of the earth, and they said when you were claiming that the moon uh, was skimming the surface of the earth 1.3 billion years ago, that was a lie. 
Right, and what they're saying then is they're claiming that actually uh, the moon, uh, they're not actually saying that the moon isn't receding, are they? No, and that's the whole point, is the science I was sharing was that fact. The yes. fact is we see the moon moving farther and farther away from the Earth. And they're disagreeing with the time scale, and uh, they're yes. doing that by arguing about uh, coral and coral rings, and you can see this on their, uh, <laughs> was, on their award uh, video on it YouTube. It was hilarious because they're going, look, you, we, we know that the Earth did not, or the Moon uh, was not skimming the surface of the Earth 1.3 billion years ago, yes. and I admit that was a little bit of hyperbole. Okay, yes. if you took it at a constant rate and factored in the inverse square law, the Moon would be almost touching the Earth 1.2 or 1.3 yes. billion years ago. I mean, obviously they're criticizing you, thinking, well, you know, the Moon would have been skimming, the two things would have been uh, would have been touching. So that's right. not what you were saying. Uh, but what I'm they've, saying they've missed, there's a limiting factor yeah. here. They've missed the entire point of the argument, of course, it's which is which is that you were not saying that that was a possibility. You were saying that if you take their views and their uniformitarian time scale, then it yes. produces an absurd result. In fact, it's an example of the uh, logical argument known as a reductio ad absurdum. That's exactly what I was trying yeah. to do. You, you look at some argument and then you t look at the corollary of that argument until you eventually reach something absurd like naught equals one, and that proves that your original point isn't true. And that's what you're doing. What he said. Yeah. So that that's so. <laughs> So they missed the entire point of the argument. The argument is completely valid, and even with their long science and uh, long scientific words and all sorts of calculations and so on, they don't actually disprove their own point. They're just quibbling about factors of amounts, and the argument stands. The argument does still stand, and that's the whole point. Is look, bottom line is the Earth, or the Moon is getting closer to the Earth. That's the whole point. Okay, Earth is getting farther. It used to be closer, now these, and that puts a limiting factor on it. These people are atheists. Correct. And the they're criticizing like you. YouTubers. And they're criticizing you for breaking the ninth commandment. For lying. It's a yep. slight irony there, isn't there? Because if they don't believe in God, uh, they don't believe the Bible's true, then what's the point of the Ten Commandments anyway? You know, that's a great thought. I mean, they have no basis for saying that lying is wrong. Matter of fact, atheist, agnostic, antichrist, God hating YouTuber, you would probably say that. There is no such thing as moral absolutes, and you're absolutely yeah. sure of that. That means there's no right or wrong. If the theory of evolution were correct, then it would certainly, surely be okay for two people like you and I to be sat here to try and persuade as many people as possible that we are correct, then we can lead them like the Pied Piper, and we survive because we are the fittest to survive. You know what, that's an interesting thought because if evolution is true and lying actually helps you, then why not? I mean, hey, as long as you don't hurt anybody, right? <laughs> Isn't that the whole point? Hey, as long as you don't hurt anybody, lying is okay. Matter of fact, if you believe in evolution, lying is a skill that you should hone in on and learn very well on how to do that. Yes, yeah, right. I mean, I saw an article once about logical fallacies, not to say that they were wrong, but how to use them to win debates, <laughs> even when your points are not strong enough. So how to use them. Why would they worry about the Ninth Commandment? Because they worry about it because they've got a conscience and they actually right. know in their hearts that God really does exist because they aren't anti whatever you said. <laughs> the uh, atheist agnostic against like Christ God hitting YouTubers. That's because exactly of course right. in their hearts they know that God exists. I love it. Their actions have betrayed them again. They do believe in right and wrong and they proved it by giving me the Golden Crocoduck Award.
Welcome back. You are watching the Creation Today Show with Eric Hoven and Paul Taylor. And we've been talking about this amazing award that I won and I just, I'm so thankful. You know, they said they were gonna send it in the mail and then that that was a lie. So I was really disappointed that I'm not gonna get anything. It's a shame that because you'd already made a space on your shelves to, yeah. to do it and you'd bought some special gold polish as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh it's well. Okay. Um, well, the, the uh, emails and questions have been flooding in and we've been using all sorts of social media today we had a question there from uh, well we had an issue to do with uh, YouTube we had a question on Facebook a question that came to questions at creation today.org actually a series of questions from Alex now Alex is a Christian and uh, believes in creation and so uh, you know he's, he's on side and this emails made it quite clear he's on side he was really just wanting clarification and uh, we're happy to give that clarification and uh, he's really got a bit confused over the issue that we're talking about it's quite a lot at the moment uh, that really came as a center stage at the Proof of God conference, which is that big word we keep using, presuppositional mm. apologetics. Sorry, that's two big words. <laughs> two big true. words for the price of one. So Alex says this, he says, if we say the existence of scientific laws is a necessary corollary of believing the Bible, the unbelievers will say to me, your faith in God is not a basis for your believing in scientific laws and uh, we need to see a connection between the two. If that connection is there, then show it to me. He then says, it doesn't seem that this is proving the existence of God or the truth of the Bible. And perhaps just as an extra comment in hmm. another email, he said, I'd, uh, I'd like to use presuppositional apologetics, but I want to be able to prove to people first that God exists. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the reason the reason I'm laughing at that is because the whole idea, the whole concept of presuppositional apologetics. Presupposition just means what you believe before you look at the information. Before I even look at this, what do I already believe before I see the evidence? So presupposition really has to do with what you're assuming is already true. Presuppositional apologetics says if you don't start with the God of the Bible evidence doesn't make sense because evidence assumes truth and truth presupposes or assumes God. So you can't get anywhere if you don't start with God. So when, when you yeah. said that last statement, he said he wants to be able to use presuppositional apologetics. He just wants to be able to prove God first. I'm going, the whole point of presuppositional apologetics is if you don't start with God, you don't get any. You don't have yeah. to prove God. See, to prove anything, you actually need a starting point. And this happens, of course, even in uh, math in mathematics. Um, you know, if you're going to do a geome geometric proof, you actually have a number of axioms, the usual ones being uh, Euclid's five axioms. Please don't ask me right now what those are, because I can't remember off the <laughs> top of my head. Who's Euclid? I don't, but it, I don't know. Well, he invented some axioms. Okay. Uh, and that, that's why they're called <laughs> Euclid's axioms. Gotcha. Um, now, you've got to have something on which to base things. And everybody does. Everybody has uh, has presuppositions. So the atheist has presuppositions. His presupposition is that God doesn't exist. Correct. Now, uh, an anonymous uh, Australian uh, creationist who leads Answers in Genesis has uh, has once <laughs> said <laughs> has once said um, that uh, it's not a question of which bias you're biased. W it's not a question of whether you have a bias or mm. not because everybody has a bias, it's a question of which is the correct bias to be biased with. Oh, nice. That's, that's what Ken said. Well said, yeah. well said. Yeah, so that, that's the issue. Everybody has a bias, but is it the atheist bias that's correct or is it the Christian bias that's correct? And we're saying it's uh, the belief in the God of the Bible that's correct. Yeah, you know, really uh, one guy that's really put this, uh, I would say, uh, at a college level, maybe even an upper high school level, is Dr. Jason Lyle. Yes. Typically, this is a subject that's been talked about really on a, uh, a postgraduate level, yes. more of a doctorate level type program. Dr. Jason Lyle, I'm gonna grab this book here. He wrote this book, uh, what, two years ago now, three years ago? Something like and that. And it is incredible. It's called The Ultimate Proof of Creation. The reason he did this was he wanted to take the proof of God, the presuppositional apologetics, and bring it down a notch. And what we did at the proof of God is we brought brought it down to fourth grade level. I mean, if my daughter can understand this stuff, which she can, it's down at fourth grade level, okay? So he wrote this book, The Ultimate Proof of Creation, and on page 40 of the book, this is all marked up here, on page 40 of the book, he tells us what the ultimate proof is. You ready for this? Ready, drum roll, the ultimate proof is? Where did it go? There it is, <laughs> the ultimate proof of creation is this. If biblical creation were not true, we could not 
know anything. Yes. And that really is what it comes down to. But you've got to read the book to find it is. out why and that's true. You can read the book. You can also watch the, uh, the, D, uh, the DVDs uh, from the Proof of God conference that we've mentioned. But you see, if you are going to try and prove God independently, there are a couple of problems with trying to prove God independently. The first is, we have already said that the atheist has his presupposition. So what you are doing, if you're going to try and say, well, let's try and be neutral, nobody's neutral. You are stepping off our presupposition and onto theirs and you're actually whether you realize it or not you're going to lose the argument straight away because you are basically acknowledging that their starting point is the correct one that really is true because here's what you have to do what i've discovered you are giving them the proposition you're showing them that if you don't start with god you reduce yourself to foolishness which mm. is exactly what the scripture tells us those that deny god are not intellectual they're not brilliant they're foolish. It's not engaging in name calling there That's either. Right. It's saying, look, you can't say God doesn't exist without looking very foolish. And that's the whole point. Mm. That's why the Bible gives a recommendation, not a recommendation, a command. When you defend your faith, it's such a powerful tool. You better do it with meekness and fear, with gentleness and with yes. respect, so that you don't offend people, because you can easily bludgeon people with this truth. And the second point that we need to emphasize is that there is an issue of authority, because if you're going to try yes. and find an independent proof for God, by, by definition, the independent proof then has a higher authority than God. The thing that you're using for the basis is the thing with the higher authority. Your talk at the Proof of God conference, I loved it. What's the, where's the practical place for evidence? Can you give very quickly that that, um, that scenario you gave, can you, can you hit that real quickly? I'll, with, uh, I'll do my best school? with a little bit. There's quite a few other things there. But you see, if, if, uh, if uh, I told a, a class uh, when I was a teacher a particular fact, let's say that I'd told them that matter was made out of atoms, and they, ch a child in the class says, uh, well, I don't quite follow that. I don't really sure, I'm not really sure that's the case. So I then give them a textbook and say, look at that textbook. And they say, ah, I see it in the textbook. I now believe it to be true. The textbook clearly has more authority than me. Yeah because that's what they've believed. And the question is, are we giving something more authority than God's Word, or is God's Word our ultimate authority? That's correct. And that's what we got to come down to. Yes. That's what these talk about, too, by the way. Yes. Because what, what this apologetic does is it teaches you to love God's Word. It teaches, you could sum up the apologetic by saying, read the Bible. I mean, that's really what you could end up saying. Absolutely right. Oh, man. Well, if you want to ask questions yourself to us, then please go do, direct them to questions at creationtoday.org or go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash creation today. Daniel is doing an incredible job on YouTube. So make sure and check out our YouTube channel, which now has more than 153 videos. YouTube.com slash creation today. And then, of course, Twitter, Twitter.com slash creation today. We love answering your questions. Keep them coming. God bless. Do you need the tools to defend your faith? Visit our websites for up to date content, attend one of our live events, and shop online at creationstore.org. We are Creation Today.